Hi, uh, my name is Chung Wong, the Vegetable Crops Farm Advisor at the University of California Cooperative Extension in Stanislaus County. The pandemic COVID-19 has changed our life in different ways, including the ways we deliver our research updates to the clientiles. So today I'm hoping that you can join me on this in-season virtual field walk to take a snapshot of the 2020 UCC Stanislaus County's Vegetable Crops Research Projects. But this year, the two major focus include weed management and the production practices evaluation. All right, let's go. Hi, uh, we're in a commercial basil field uh, in Modesto. So as we know, basil is a uh, tender herb species, which is mostly grown in the southern part of uh, U.S., including the states of California, Arizona, New Mexico, and the Florida. Commercial basil production is usually without the application of herbicides, especially after plant emergence. And also, there's not a bunch of choices of herbicide application pre-emergent. Therefore, people spend a lot of uh, uh, investment on the labor force to take care of the hand removal. And uh, I have been working with Western Region IR4 to put out some trials of testing the performance of herbicides in the basal weed control in 2019. The purpose of these trials are to promote the registration of these herbicides and offers some more choices for basil and other leafy herb vegetable growers to combat the weeds in their fields. So the herbicide we're testing here is safantazol. This is a second year trial here since 2019. The safantazol was either used alone at after, right after the basil is seeded as a pre-emergent uh, application, or applied after the seed germination, but prior to the seed emergence. It is also used in combination with the grower's standard herbicide as a combination treatment. So the uh, specific treatments and the planting information of this trial is listed on the screen. This field was seeded on April 30, 2020. Four basal varieties, Obsession, Devotion, Passion, and Helena were planted into 40 inches wide beds with double seeding lines. There are a total of six herbicide treatments, including spraying Sophantazone alone immediately after seeding as a pre-emergent application, or spraying a few days after seeding but before seedling emergence as a delayed pre-emergent application. In addition, the Sophantazone was also applied in combination with the Devarino product which is the grower's standard choice at different rates. The grower's standard herbicide application and herbicide-free plots were included as two controls. During and at the end of the season, we are evaluating weed control effects and basal injury by taking quadratic pictures at a bi-weekly basis, starting at two weeks after seed. Scanning the vegetative coverage using the NDVI meter and measuring leaf chlorophyll contents using the SPAE meter to monitor plant growth and measuring total biomass after basil is harvested. Okay, uh, we're in another basil field and the herbicide that we're testing here is the AC fluorophyll. The herbicide was applied right after the basil is seeded and again the herbicide performance will be compared with the grower's standard herbicide application. So now in this part, this is a treatment that was applied by the AC fluorophyll at a rate of three pints per acre. And you can get a close look at the, the key with the weeds after the weeds germinated uh, and, and the plants was affected and successfully killed by the herbicide. We also have a treatment at about a half of that rate, which is a 1.5 pints per acre and also there's some showed the efficacy of the uh, uh, wheat cube and all these 
uh, performances together with the uh, leaf biomass and other growth parameters will be uh, combined together to compare among different treatments to tell people uh, the efficacy of this herbicide. For this AC fluorophen testing trial, the beds were seeded with the identical four basal varieties on June 2, 2020. The AC fluorophen containing product, Ultra Blazer, was soil applied immediately after seeding at 3 and 1.5 pounds per acre. Meanwhile, the grower's standard herbicide practice was also included along with two nitrated controls. With all these uh, data being collected, we will be able to evaluate the potential use labeling for basal or continue with more testing if the data are not supported. Okay, uh, we leave Modesto and now we're in Patterson. So right here is a processing tomato trial of testing the green waste uh, compost application rates on processing tomato productivity and the plant soil nitrogen status. So this trial was funded by the California Tomato Research Institute. The green waste compost was applied at five, 10, and 15 times per acre as low, medium, and high rate. The purpose of the study is to understand the benefit of using compost to impact the plant productivity and the soil health. So this trial was transplanted on uh, May 20 on this 66 inches bed and with each plant spacing of 22 inches. So the total population for this trial is about 9,000 plants Per acre. And now we have started monitoring plant growth and the plant health, soil nitrogen status, and the plant tissue nutrient analysis. So please stay tuned to our newsletter and other resources for the flow of the project results. Okay, and last we are in Manteca, San Joaquin County to visit this uh, grafted processing tomato field. Dashboard grafting is a technique that physically combines two plants into one with the advantages of soil-borne disease resistance and yield enhancement. And this practice has been adopted for centuries among Asia countries such as China, Japan, and South Korea. Root part, noted as rootstock, provides merit of soil disease resistance, while shoot part, noted as scion, that is usually the commercial cultivar, gives higher yields. With the challenges of soil disease and yield demands, vegetable grafting has attracted more attention in the U.S. since the first decade of the 21st century. University of California joined the national team together with another eight U.S. land-grant universities and research laboratory in 2016 to evaluate the best use of grafted vegetable plants in a variety of production systems. The collaborations among these institutions are supported by the USDA Specialty Crop Research Initiative. So this processing tomato trial right behind me was implemented by Dr. Brandon Aker from UCC San Joaquin office, uh, Jim Miao from Yolo office, and myself. So the trial here in California tends to uh, address two questions. One, which grafted combination produced consistently in terms of a high fruit yield? Two, is it possible to plant grow a reduced number of grafted plants per acre in order to drop the production cost while still sustaining uh, the fruit yield. And the planting and the trial information as well as the rootstock and scion varieties are listed on the screen. In this trial, 
grafted and ungrafted tomato plants were transplanted into the single 60 inches wide beds on May 12, 2020. The grafting combinations included two commercial scion cultivars, N6428 and SVTM1082, grafted onto three rootstocks, Maxifort, Astamino, and Fusabro. Non-grafted scions were planted as controls. All the grafted and non-grafted plants were placed in a normal or doubled spacings to reflect a 50% plant population reduction. So as shown on the slides, uh, the plants are either grown normally at a 12 inches wide spacing on the 60 uh, inches wide bed, or we have this wider spacing, which the space is doubled for to, to 24 inches per plant. And also for this trial, the fruit yield and the, the uh, quality are our major focus. And also we monitor the plant growth and health throughout the season. Stay tuned to more results. Thank you. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, virtual field walk and get the information that interests you. As season progresses, I'll provide more timely updates via our newsletter and our social media account. Feel free to subscribe to the newsletter and follow us on Twitter. Please do not hesitate to send me your questions, comments, and more regarding these trials and your vegetable operations. Take care and stay safe.